Our lives are embedded within cycles. The rhythm of the breath and the pulse, the cycle of the day, the month and the year. And there have been plenty of respected, relatively mainstream thinkers who've argued that there are cycles of growth and decline at play in the expansion and collapse of civilizations and in the ebb and flow of economies. Now, there are those who argue that these ideas are unfalsifiable and thus pseudoscientific. And if you start to suggest that some of these cycles seem to be correlated with the natural rhythms that nature shows us exist in terms of the arrangement of matter in our solar system, well, congratulations, you just became a crank. But this channel is for all the cranks out there, the cranks with eyes to see. Now in this episode, the first in a two-part series, we are going to explore one of the major cyclical theories in macroeconomics, the Kondratiev wave, which posits that the global economy grows and declines according to roughly 40 to 60 year cycles connected to the invention of particular technologies like the steam engine or electricity or the computer. When it was devised in the 1920s, this theory seemed to work very well to describe the development of the global economy since the Industrial Revolution of the late 18th century. And it worked so well that it intrigued some very well-known thinkers, like the economist Joseph Schumpeter and the famous Marxist historian Eric Hobsbawm. But then, in the 20th century, it seemed to stop working so well. The technological cycles of 40 to 60 years didn't fit what was happening in the global economy anymore, and it seemed to some that the Kondratiev wave theory was, well, just plain wrong. But there was a reason why it didn't work anymore, and my rather brilliant guest in this episode figured out why. He's an economist, business consultant, an astrologer from Germany, and his name is Christoph Niederwieser. Yeah, hi Dan and everybody, thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, I'm Dr. Christoph Niederwieser. Um, I'm a professional astrologer for more than 10 years now, but I'm doing astrology for 30 years all in all, and I focus most of all on astrological research, like um, cycle research, uh, comparing cycles in other fields of sciences, like economic cycles and, and history cycles and so on on one side, astrological cycles on the other side. But I've also developed a couple of new techniques. Uh, the most famous one is the group horoscope, where you can really uh, delineate the charts of whole groups of people, like, like teams or families or even rock bands, music bands, uh, political committees, etc. And yeah, my, my major passion is mundane astrology. So the astrology of the, of the world and of everything that happens to us in the past and in the future. Christoph figured out that the Kondratiev wave is fundamentally astrological. And what's more, astrology actually fixes the problems of the theory and gives us incredible insight into the future of technology, economy, and history. Christoph's modification of the Kondratiev is called the Astro-Kondratiev cycle. And when I read about it, it blew my mind. And I hope it's going to blow your mind too. So, in this first episode, we'll learn about the Kondratiev wave, what it successfully explained about history, economy, and technology, but why it ultimately fails as a standalone theory. And in the next episode in the series, we'll see how astrology fixes the problems and helps us to see the direction that global economies and history are actually heading in. If you have any interest in history, futurology, technology, or investing, and you have eyes to see an unorthodox, but I think very insightful perspective on these subjects, you're gonna to wanna to watch these episodes. Now, before we get into this, please do give that like button a click. It's free and it really helps the channel. And please do subscribe too if you haven't already. Make sure you keep supplied with fresh astrological insight. So without further ado, let's get into this. I'm going to let Christoph do most of the talking in this episode because it's his theory and he understands it best. Now, to understand the Kondratiev wave, we need to start by learning something of the man who invented it, Nikolai Kondratiev. He was a Russian economic researcher and he also was the director of the Institute of Conjuncture uh, in Moscow uh, in the early days of communism there. 
Yeah, so I mean the the Tsar Empire, the Tsar regime, what had, had just crushed, and uh, the communists they wanted to have a good foundation for their four-year plans, and so they thought, okay, let's take lots of economical data. And Nikolai Kondratiev, he took all the data that he could get at that moment of time from any kind of countries like uh, wages, development of wages in France or development of unemployment rates in Russia or um, development of exports uh, in the UK and so on. And uh, when we compared all these data and uh, not just over a couple of years, but really over the decades, he found out a pattern. Yeah, He found out a wave a wave pattern that really seemed to uh, go through history yeah, with upswings and downswings and they all were quite synchronized across the world and across all this data. And so uh, finally it came to the result that there must be some, some, yeah, some, some higher pattern behind economic development. Of course, the communist regime wasn't happy about it yeah, because in the philosophy of Marx and Engels, you have like a historical development that always goes upwards. Yeah? And first there are uh, all the monarchs and the monarchs, they are kind of overcome then by the capitalists. And in the end, the capitalists are overcome by the, by this, by the workers. Yeah? And uh, then this is the end of history. Yeah? And now Nikolai Kondratiev was saying, oh no, it's, it's up and down and we always have crises, we always have upswings and downswings. And uh, of course, the communist regime didn't like it. And so unfortunately, he was killed in the Gulag. He was arrested for his research and he died very, very young in the Gulag for it. Yeah, uh, which is really tragic. Um, but uh, until nowadays, it's one of the most known cycles in uh, economic research. Kondratiev noticed that there seemed to be a pattern emerging from economic data and statistics, which showed a period of growth in economies of about 25 years, followed by a period of decline of about the same length. And he theorized that this had to do with technology. The basic thought behind this, there is always a basic technology that emerges really new into our collectives. And as soon as this new technology is here, it kind of starts uh, a growth process in the economy. So essentially, a technology is invented at a certain moment in history. Investors pour money into it, an economy is built out around it, and there's a period of growth. Jobs are being created, people are making money, and the prosperity feels pretty good all round. For example, the first uh, cycle that Kondratiev found out started in the 1790s with the Industrial Revolution. So steam engine, uh, also textile industry have been the, the, the basic technology behind. Yeah? So somebody invents the steam engine or makes it that effective that you really can use it for production. And then, of course, an infrastructure starts to get built up. This takes, let's say, 20, 25 years. Yeah? It grows and grows and grows more and more until it finally gets that big that uh, this, uh, the costs for additional machine get always higher compared to the positive effect on the economy that you get out of it. And then some, at some point in time, let's say the landscape is full of, of all these factories with their steam engines and uh, it's kind of gets an overproduction and then the cycle crushes. And uh, yeah, and people then are going to search for new technologies that bring them further. Now this is what the Kondratiev cycle looks like. It's a sequence of cycles that rise and fall. Yeah, so the next cycle started around 1850, and this was this railway and steel uh, cycle. Yeah, first of all, the development, the basic technology was the steel production. Finally, you could really build huge machines, like huge ships with steam engines, for example. Yeah, or also these huge trains for the railroads. Yeah, with every cycle, you start to create a demand. Yeah, so or you, you fulfill a demand and you create another demand. The demand that the steam engine cycle fulfilled was to produce goods that we need on a daily basis at very, very low costs. But then the next demand was how can we spread it across the world? Yeah, 
because I mean you had you had horses back then and nothing else. And uh, so the next cycle, starting in the 1850s, was the, the railway cycle, because they said, okay, let's build railways all over the continents, and then we can spread and distribute our products all across the globe, all across the world. Yeah? And so further, yeah, uh, around 1900, we saw the start of electrotechnology. Basic technology was electricity and everything that was created out of it. Electric light, but also things like radio, later cinema, television, and all that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And when uh, Kondratiev published his cycle in the mid-1920s, he said, okay, now we are at the heydays of the cycle and it will soon crash, which definitely happened then in 1929, Black Friday and the huge economic world crisis. It was during the third Kondratiev wave, the wave of mass production in electrotechnology, that Nikolai Kondratiev himself died in 1938. So it then fell to his economist successors to apply the theory to the remainder of wave three and the cycles that followed. They took this pattern, they saw oh, it's around 50 years, and then they tried to prolong the cycle. And they postulated, okay, in 1950, there started an automobile cycle until the 1970s, oil crisis, then in the 1990s, the next contract you've started, information technology with computer. And if you read those books that have been very popular back in the 1990s, they said, okay, this will go until maybe 2002, 2005, and then the computer cycle will be at, at, at the peak, and then the economy will crash down again. And afterwards, most said, okay, there will be a cycle that has to do with our health, with our mental health, our, and also our physical health. But if you look back at this pattern uh, now, we have the year 2023, you have to say, no, something went completely wrong there. Now, before we explain why the Kondratiev doesn't work so well, I just want to interrupt the narrative once again to let you know that I'm currently taking bookings for private consultations if you're intrigued by the information I present on this channel and want to know what intriguing things astrology might say about you and your life, this is your chance to find out. I meet clients from all over the world on Zoom to help them situate themselves in time and understand their past, their present and their future, or simply to help them figure out questions of purpose and what they really want to do with their lives. I use a variety of modern and traditional techniques, including transits, the 36 decans, lots, zodiacal releasing, progressions, and astro mapping to help my clients answer the most important questions in their lives. If you're interested, find the details in the description below. And now, back to the narrative. So there are actually some big problems with the Kondratiev wave. It doesn't quite fit the realities of technology, economic growth, and history. Even didn't make sense back then. For example, the fourth Kondratiev cycle, automobile, starting in 1950. If you look at the economic data, I mean, we had a huge growth of automobile already in the 19s, 1910s, 1920s. Yeah, the, the Ford Model T sold millions, millions of cars already in the 1910s. Yeah. Here's a picture of the parking lot for game one of the Baseball World Series in Boston in 1916. The economists had also been confused by the huge growth they saw beginning after the Second World War, and they assumed this must have meant a new cycle had begun. But of course, after a Second World War, where everything is destroyed, of course, any kind of curve has to go upward after the Second World War. Yeah? So it was kind of more the wish to find the pattern than really a serious economically investigation, yeah. And then the current Kondratiev cycle that supposedly began in 1990 around information technology doesn't seem to work well either. Computers were around well before 1990, of course, and even the internet appeared in the mid 60s in the form of ARPANET. Due to the publications of, of Kondratiev disciples of the 1980s, 1990s, this should have stopped around the year 2002, 2005, something like that. But if you look back, uh, this was were just the years when information technology finally found business model to help them grow. Yeah, I mean, until 2002, um, it, it was nearly impossible to earn money in the internet. Yeah, 
And I mean, the, the, the crush of the new economy bubble in 2000 uh, it was, was just a symptom of, it, of this. Yeah? Everybody had hopes to make money, but nobody knew how to make money in the internet. And just then after this crush, after the break of the, of the new economy bubble, uh, they, they found out uh, really sustainable business models that uh, helped them to earn lots of money. And if you look now, you could say all these big, huge companies that now are like top brands in the world, like, like Facebook, etc. Uh, I mean, they, they just started afterwards. And yet the theory genuinely did seem to fit economic realities quite well in the 19th century and up until Kondratiev's death. So what happened? Well, here is where astrology comes to the rescue. Because what Christophe discovered is that the 40 to 60 year cycle wasn't consistent for a reason. They didn't realize that this is an asymmetrical cycle. It's not a 50 year cycle, but it's triggered by the cycle of Uranus and Pluto. And Pluto has a very elliptical orbit around the Sun. Kondratiev had really seen a cycle based on the hard aspects, meaning the conjunctions, squares and oppositions of Uranus and Pluto. Any synodic cycle involving Pluto will never have a consistent period, because sometimes Pluto moves very slowly through the zodiac, and at others it speeds up. In the time span that Kondratiev investigated, we had these 50 years, yeah? Um, that really uh, showed us all these conjunctions, squares, oppositions of Uranus and Pluto. But afterwards, it really got much, much longer. So the next cycle was 80 years old and this they just didn't get back then. Yeah. You might wonder if he had any knowledge or interest in astrology and whether he'd researched what we know to be the most ancient science of cycles. But it seems he probably didn't. I also thought about this, um, but uh, what is very important, he was killed in the Gulag already in the late 1920s. So a couple of years before Pluto, which is kind of a really um, eminent factor in the astrological background of the Kondratiev, um, before this was even discovered. Yeah? So even if Kondratiev would have been interested in astrology, he wouldn't have been able to find this pattern because he didn't know Pluto back then. So this is the astro Kondratiev cycle. And in the next episode, in this two-part series, which might come a couple of videos down the line, we're going to see what the Astro Kondratiev tells us about the cycles of history and economy and where we're going. And we're going to see how we've already entered the declining phase of an Astro Kondratiev wave. That's one explanation for some of the phenomena we've seen in the last few years, including the economic tensions and pressures on globalization, the more gloomy feel in the zeitgeist, as well as the increasing tendencies towards authoritarianism and surveillance using information technology. So thanks so much to Christoph for joining me this time. Most of his work is in German, but he does have some English material that you can check out, including an article on the Astro Kondratiev cycle itself on astro.com which is linked in the description below. Uh, on my website, astrology.de, um, you can find lots of my, of my stuff. Uh, you also can find some, some English content there. And yeah, I mean, in the end, my major focus is on business consulting. So uh, I'm doing lots of cons consultations for bigger companies. And you can always do what I've done and watch his great German videos with the subtitles translated automatically by YouTube. Now, if you find the intersection of technology and astrology interesting, I suggest you watch this video, which I made with the astrologer and software developer Wei, aka Saad Al Sud on Twitter. In this video, we looked into what astrology might be telling us about the past, present, and future of social media and the internet. Thanks, and see you next time.